Welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review. Highlights, features, and analysis with head coach Connell Maynard. Brought to you by Datacom Solutions, Fellowship of Faith, and Huntsville Hospital. Bulldog fans, welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review. Good evening and thank you for watching the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm your host, Ted Dixie. Bulldogs journey to Cincinnati, Ohio, had not played the Bearcats since 2015 when we opened their renovated Nippert Stadium. Bulldogs come up short, coach, but your Bulldogs played hard the entire ball game. They did. We did. Uh, the guys played hard, uh, didn't give up, uh, was down big at halftime and came out and, uh, and played a lot harder in the second half. Of course, they made some subs, but, you know, they subs are just as good as they started. So I was proud of the guys that didn't. They didn't quit. We went out and got a score, and, and they played a lot better on defense in the second half than we did the first half. A better term for games like this would be playing outside of your weight class, 22 more scholarships, Coach. But what does that translate like onto the field? Uh, well, it was took us out to the old woodshed and gave us a good old butt whooping. You know, uh, we was outmatched, and uh, it showed. It showed they got a very good uh, football team and program, and, and uh, they, they'll do well this season. But, if we watch the on the first half highlights, you had a lot of early success in the ball game. You gave yourselves opportunities for third and shorts, not converting. But to get to that point, Coach, shows a lot about your football team. Yeah, yeah, you know, show our guys came out and competed, you know. And, uh, um, you know, we made some plays early, had a couple opportunities. And then we kind of shot ourselves in the foot, a couple penalties here, um, drop ball here. So, um, but, you know, that's, that's great signs to show that uh, we can move the ball against a defense like that. We'll talk more about a championship mentality, Coach, but some of those things that are evident early in the game about your championship mentality that you want your team to have. Uh, just, just competing, competing, and uh, that's what they did early. Uh, defensively, uh, we didn't compete early. You know, they, they were just bigger, faster, stronger. You know, we was in position. Uh, we just didn't make the tackle. Now, if we weren't in position, that's one thing, but mm -hmm. we was there. We just couldn't bring them down. And so uh, I was proud of our guys that, you know, assignment-wise, Alignment, assignment, which is where we need to be. Uh, they were just physically b bigger, faster, and stronger. And a game like this, an indication of your preparedness is how special teams play. You didn't give up a special team touchdown, nor really did they get any return yardage last night. Right. Uh, the punting game was excellent. Uh, you know, um, the couple, I think they had three returns for six yards, and uh, then they didn't return the other ones. Uh, the kickoff team, uh, we uh, skied it, and uh, they, they, I think they ran two of those back and probably got 12 yards maybe, if that much. So I was very proud of how the guys uh, competed on the kickoff team. Uh, the one special teams that wasn't up to par is the kickoff return team. Mm -hmm. uh, one time we brought it out and we only got like 10 yards. Um, so we go to work on that, uh, but overall the special teams was good. Quick question about special teams. There's a new rule this year, and we saw it play out last night. Tell us about the fair catch rule on a kickoff, Coach. Yeah, uh, anytime you fair catch it inside uh, of in play, as long as you're not in the end zone, if you fair catch it, it automatically comes to the 25-yard line. So um, you know, when you get those high, short pooches to the 5, 10-yard line, you know, the defense get to fly down there, so it's better off fair catching that ball and getting it at 25. If not, they're probably going to get you somewhere around that 15, 16, 17-yard line. And so we will have a look at the first half highlights of the Bulldogs game at the University of Cincinnati when we come back on the Alabama and m Football Review. Hello, I'm Fester Troy. The game of football is a lot like the game of life. You have to tackle your problems and block your fears. I just want you to know there is victory in Jesus. I want to invite you to worship with us at one of our anointed services at our Huntsville campus or our Madison campus. At the Fellowship of Faith, Jesus is exalted and the word is explained. We love Alabama A&M. Go Bulldogs! <laughs> Darrow brings new energy to the power plant. Julian's accounting is by the numbers. There's student interns from the College of Business and Public Affairs at Alabama A&M University, where marketing class connects with the community and companies come to recruit. So while Kyle strengthens his managerial skills, he's earning a business degree and experience at Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. 
WJAB FM Huntsville. 100,000 watts, 24 hours a day. Smooth jazz and cool vocals. I'm just a prisoner of love. I get misty just holding your 90.9 WJAB. From the campus of Alabama A&M University. Parker is 29 and learning to communicate again. The students teaching him earn a degree with 100% job placement. But the real reward is changing a life. At Alabama A&M, it's a university where agencies actually go to recruit compassionate students who help themselves by helping others. Service is sovereignty at Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Yeah. Thank you for watching the Alabama A&M Football Review with Connell Maynor. I'm Ted Dixie, getting ready to take a look at the first half highlights, Coach. It's a beautiful stadium, a nice venue to play football. It's a late game, though, so we saw, found ourselves walking around the hotel trying to find something to do about 1 o'clock. Yeah, I don't really like to play those late games. Uh, uh, I like to go ahead and get them over with. You know, when you have so much to do that day, you got to get the guys up. You go to breakfast. Uh, you do a walkthrough and then you let them get back off their feet. You know, you got probably four or five hours in between before you go to uh, pregame meal, which is four hours before the game. So you still got four hours after pregame meal, and then after pregame meal, you load the bus, and you finally get to head over to the stadium, and you still get there two hours and a half before the game starts. So it just makes for a very long day uh, when you have those night games, six, seven o'clock games, and uh, uh, you know you're anxious and you're ready to play. Mm -hmm. And then it, it, uh, travel-wise, it kind of pushes you a little bit behind because you get back so late uh, with the film and getting started on your next opponent the next week. So it's always good to play those early games, uh, 2 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Get them out of the way, get your film work, get back, you know, get acclimated, get ready for the next week. So, um, but everybody has to do it. Speaking of travel, the Bulldogs flew to Cincinnati, and we'd like to be appreciative of our ride when we got to Cincinnati. Spirit Coach met us there. We're thankful for that. I'm just waiting on my luggage. That's a side joke. But when you take those trips, Coach, some teams will fly up the day of the game and some will fly up the night before. What's the difference in that for you? Well, uh, I don't know if they do it because of money. You know, uh, you could save a little bit of money hotel-wise if you do that, but um, I just don't think that's a good idea. You know, you can get jet lag or, or something of that nature. Uh, you can get sick. Get a delay. Yeah, you can get a delay, get the flight cancellation or something. So, uh, which we did have a delay, get, waiting on gas, you know. So, uh, yeah, I just think it's better to go up the night before, get a good night's rest, get you off your feet, relax, and get ready to play. And as we get ready to watch the highlights, the Bulldogs captains for the game, one of them, Mike Mills, who probably set a record for the most passes asked for by a student athlete. I think he owes everybody on the team, Coach. Yeah, he does. He uh, had a lot of people at the game. and But, you know, you got a lot of guys that didn't have anybody there, so it wasn't a problem. But, yeah, he It he balances might. out. Right. <laughs> Mike Mills, our only student athlete from Ohio, had about 90 people there at the ball game. Mike Mills, an outstanding student athlete, a walk-on, who now is a scholarship athlete as we look at the Bulldogs' first offensive series. Yeah, the first play was uh, Isaiah Bailey down a little hitch route, and then um, – uh, Bailey got them, excuse me. Uh, Jordan Bentley with the carry up the yeah. middle that got several yards and the Bulldogs end up punting. All right. And we just went with a little quick punt right there with the quarterback. Uh, make sure they didn't get no return. They have a chance to block it and uh, worked out pretty good. We've seen a kill glass and we don't know what his punting statistics are, but I think he's averaging around 30 yards a punt. No, I think it's a little bit more. You know, he got to <laughs> roll. He got to roll a couple of times. So um, I told him don't quit his day job. And so now Spencer Corey, speaking of which, when we thought punting might be an adventure this season, Corey last night averaged 40 yards a punt and had two over 50 yards. Yes, he did. He punted the ball well. Like I said, I think they had three returns for six yards total. So 
Uh, the, the coverage team is doing a great job, and uh, he, he's doing a great job, and, uh, you know, just his first year punting. Your first Southwestern Athletic Conference game is next week. What happens in this game to prepare you for next week? Uh, I think just guys fighting and competing, playing hard, never not quitting. Uh, it's going to definitely help us. Playing up, up against this competition, you know, um, it would be a pleasure coming back down, playing an FCS opponent and a conference opponent. As you can see, the defense right here, uh, one of our two sacks there. And so that was a great job by those guys. But really, that was a cover sack. He had to hold the ball there and allow for the defense lineman there to get that uh, sack. And we move to the second quarter, Coach. Here's a good response here by the Bulldog defense. We will probably see this play a lot in the swag. Yeah, yeah, that little bubble pass, a uh, quick screen out there. He had to rally, he had to beat that block just like he just did right there again. And, uh, and then let everybody else rally to the ball. You got to slow him up as soon as he catches him. If you can do that, everybody else can rally too, and that's what he's able to do. Here again, getting off the blocks. We was able to get off blocks. So as you can see, we, we, um, we had a lot of good plays in the game. We just didn't have enough. Uh, you know, I said it last week, surges of greatness to get you beat. You have to be consistent. And so we made some, some great plays and some plays, but we got to be more consistent and make them more uh, consistently and all the time. And speaking of consistency, the Bulldogs' next game will be this Saturday in Mobile, Alabama, the Gulf Coast Classic, first one in this series of games against Southern University. It's our home game which means you get to pick the uniform. Yeah, we'll probably be, uh, uh, I don't know. Depends what Hank Harris wants to wear, Coach. Yeah, we'll probably go with the uh, maroon uniforms this week. We haven't worn our maroon uh, uniforms all year, um, but we'll see. And then we'll see the end of the first half highlights. Coach, you go into the half, you're down big, but you still want to accomplish some goals in the ball game that you always set for yourselves. One being penalties, the Bulldogs only had seven penalties on the night. Nothing that was drive killing, especially except one time. Yeah, you know, we got one in the first series there. You know, it was only a five yard penalty, um, but it moves us from third and eight to third and 13. You know, so that, that's, that could be big. But, you know, I was pleased that we had seven penalties only for 40 yards. So that's not even six yards of penalty. So that means all the penalties are just little five yard penalties. You know, we can get that cleaned up. Mm -hmm. You know, we got the personal fouls, the 15 yarders, the big ones uh, cleaned up. Now we get these little uh, jumping off size and, and little five yard penalties cleaned up and we'll be ready to roll. Uh, I think they had uh, the same amount of penalties, but they had more yards than we did. So um, that's always good. That's always good to show that you, you're disciplined and you're not going to beat yourself. How do you instill discipline to not get penalties, Coach? A little football one on one there. Oh, man, you got to hold them accountable. You got to hold them accountable when they do stuff that they ain't supposed to do that's going to cost you ball games. You, you got you to punish them. You got to make them do some rolls, do some up downs, uh, whatever it take. And, uh, and, you know, if they do enough of those, they'll stop jumping. And of course, the Bulldogs will come back in the second half and we'll see the Bulldogs scoring drive when we come back on the Alabama A&M Football Review. Hello, I'm Fester Troy. The game of football is a lot like the game of life. You have to tackle your problems and block your fears. I just want you to know there is victory in Jesus. I want to invite you to worship with us at one of our anointed services at our Huntsville campus or our Madison campus. At the Fellowship of Faith, Jesus is exalted and the word is explained. We love Alabama A&M. Go Bulldogs! <laughs> Engineering and science usually look like this, but our students build race cars from the ground up, explore wind tunnels, particle accelerators, and crystal growth. Our studies in cybersecurity and rocket propulsion have tech companies like Google and SpaceX recruiting at Alabama A&M University with one of the highest percentages of women STEM graduates in the country. Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. 90.9 WJAB FM Huntsville 100,000 watts 24 hours a day Smooth jazz and cool vocals and the home of mellow madness till midnight you bring me joy 90.9 WJAB from the campus of Alabama A&M University Companies hunger for our food scientists. Here, a new generation manages our cities of tomorrow. 
The discovery of hardier plants, healthier animals, is growing at our research station. Alabama A&M University, where new designs and ideas are put to the test. Be a researcher in our labs, or a forestry fire dog in our fields. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Thank you for watching the Alabama A&M Football Review with Connell Maynard. I'm Ted Dixie, your host. Bulldogs coming out for the second half of the game. We actually got to see a fine performance by the marching maroon and white. They always get standing ovations wherever they go. Even before the game, there is a joint activity that the University of Cincinnati Band always has with the visiting team, and they play out in their tailgating pavilion. After the half, coach, and come back on the field, what are you thinking about? Uh, just competing, not quitting. Uh, that's what we talked about with the guys that uh, we're going to play for 60 minutes. So we got 30 more minutes and uh, I want to see those guys come out and uh, give it their all the second half. And uh, that's what they did. You know, um, they got the ball first, of course, they scored, uh, but it took them, they probably ran off seven minutes of the clock. Mm -hmm. And so we made them work for it. It wasn't like it was in the first half where they just went up and down the football field. So uh, then the offense came out and we got a drive going and, and put it together and the guys stuck in there, made some plays. Akil, uh, you know, um, was had to work in the pocket a lot last night, and uh, I was proud of where he was able to hang in there, and make some throws under some direct pressure, you know. And uh, you know, we had two sacks, and they had two sacks. So I was proud of the offensive line, um, even though we only gave two sacks. We gave them some pressures, but at the end of the day, against that football team and those two big guys they had in the inside, that's I think number six and number five in the nation. Uh, on the D-line. That's with Clemson, Alabama, and everybody. Mm. Uh, I thought we did a good job against those guys. Being able to hang tough with what the Bulldogs did. Now, your early success that you had in the first half, you're trying to bring that over in the second half, and that <coughs> did result in the Bulldogs with a scoring drive. It did. It did. Uh, like I say, we, we had some opportunities uh, in the first half and just weren't able to uh, keep it going, and uh, that's consistency. And so we came out the third quarter there, and we was consistent. And when you're consistent, you can make, you can put a drive together and get a score. You have a little football 101 for us, Coach. When you say uh, an opportunity or you had chances, what exactly do you mean? Well, third down and short, you know, win position. Uh, you know, make, get a first down or a couple first downs, we've got a chance to make a first down, so. Good deal. We see the <clears> opening <throat> kickoff here in Cincinnati with another drive. I am just always fascinated when our student athletes, whether they're up or down, that they still play the same, that they look good, that their attitudes are what you expect. I know on the plane ride home, Coach, some of your student athletes were talking about what plays might have worked. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's uh, always encouraging. You know, those guys are still trying to get better as we look at uh, Brian Jenkins Jr. right there on the catch on the sprint out from uh, Glass. And then we got Keon Dollar right here, another freshman, a big running back that uh, showing a lot of promise. And he's going to be very good here. Here's a little third down short run. and. He just uh, lowered his shoulder and got the first down. That's Good just sign wrong. from a running back. Yeah, great sign. And uh, and so um, it's, it's another little sprint out pass here. And uh, Akil pulled it down. Good coverage by them. And uh, he made positive play there with four yards. And here we go right here with a touchdown pass. Um, Xavier big, Moore. His first one as a Bulldog. Congratulations to Xavier. Yeah, that's that's big time, man. We are trying to get a score. We don't want to get shut out. And uh, – and Glass worked the pocket right there, made the throw to Zay, made it, uh, ran a good route. As you can see again, shook him at the top of the route, and uh, quarterback threw it outside where his guy could catch it. There are lots of pass plays, Coach. It looks like everyone was taking advantage of field position. That's something we've noticed about your receivers this season. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, we got to when we get in that red zone. We was only in the red zone one time, and we got one score, and it was a touchdown. So that's very positive, you know. Um, to keep scoring and scoring touchdowns when you get in the red zone. So as we look at that interception right there on the tip ball, it was good coverage by the defense. Uh, here's another punt. If memory serves me correctly, the Bulldogs are 100% on red zone chances this season. I think you might be right, you know. And so uh, we want to keep it up there as high as we can with the touchdowns. And, of course, just as long as we score a period, it's, it's always good. But we would like to score more touchdowns than field goals, which uh, we did this week. Another thing that you wanted to do was come out of the game uh, unscathed on the injury side of the ledger. You played almost everyone you took up to Cincinnati, Coach. <clears throat> yeah, that's why we wanted to take them. You know, we 
We didn't want the game to get out of hand, but if it did, we want to get those backup guys in there, get them some playing time, some experience against the big time schools, and then keep our starters and guys that we're going to depend on to make a run here uh, healthy. For a student athlete who doesn't expect to play during the season but works hard, are these like reward games for them, Coach? Yeah, uh, you know, uh, you know, everybody we take got a chance to play. We don't, we don't take people just to take people. So if we take you, uh, we feel that you can help us. If he's on special teams or a couple of plays on defense to get people a breather, or a couple of plays a wide receiver or running back to get those guys a breather, uh, we expect you to play. Now, only people that really we don't expect you to play is probably the second, third string quarterback in a normal game. But everybody else, you know, got a chance to get in the football game and help us out. As you see, Josh Cotray right there, our third string quarterback, third string, throwing yeah. the Gardner for a 24 yard gain on a bootleg. So, um, you know, that was a great opportunity for those guys to get in there. And not only did they get in there, they performed. You know, Josh made a good fake, sprinted out, right. and uh, threw a dime there to Gardner, and he snagged it. So, um, and Gardner probably going to get some more playing time. You, you start making plays like that, and, uh, you know, that, that's how you get, move up the depth chart. <clears throat> Your Thursday practice this week, but usually on Friday, is a quarterback competition. I got a chance to see that Josh Cartwright and Octavius Miles won the competition this week, Coach, and then he gets a chance to play. That's got to feel good for him. Yeah, we kind of challenged him, uh, you know, this week. Uh, me and Coach Taylor, you know, I got on a little bit about his passes and running the team. And um, so we, we was hope that he responded by having a great day Thursday. And he did. He won the challenge. So that shows us that he has what it takes to play at this level. And he's a tight quarterback that we want, that when you challenge him, they step up. And so he stepped up and won the challenge this week. So we were so, so proud of him. Even though we was upset to lose, um, we was proud that he won and he stepped it up. And then he got in the game and, and made a throw. So we, we were very proud of his, uh, his uh, continuance to, to get better at the position of quarterback. You create a lot of competition. <laughs> You have a lot of enthusiasm for your team, and that gets to pay off this week when you start conference play, playing Southern, who has done well the last few years with the senior SWAC head coach, Dawson Odoms. Yes, uh, you know, Dawson Odoms is a great football coach. He's done a great job at Southern. Um, and, you know, they, they picked right up there again this year. And so uh, to be the champs, you got to beat the champs and beat the teams that's supposed to be the champs. So. We got to go down to uh, Mobile this week in the Classic. It's our home game and uh, take down Odom and the Southern Jaguars. And we'll talk more about that when we come back on the Alabama A&M Football Review. Hello, I'm Pastor Troy. The game of football is a lot like the game of life. You have to tackle your problems and block your fears. I just want you to know there is victory in Jesus. I want to invite you to worship with us at one of our anointed services at our Huntsville campus or our Madison campus. At the Fellowship of Faith, Jesus is exalted and the word is explained. We love Alabama A&M. Go Bulldogs! <laughs> Darrow brings new energy to the power plant. Julian's accounting is by the numbers. There's student interns from the College of Business and Public Affairs at Alabama A&M University, where marketing class connects with the community and companies come to recruit. So while Kyle strengthens his managerial skills, he's earning a business degree and experience at Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. 90.9 WJAB FM Huntsville 100,000 watts 24 hours a day Smooth jazz and cool vocals and the home of mellow madness till midnight You bring me joy 90.9 WJAB from the campus of Alabama A&M University
Thank you for watching the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm your host, Ted Dixie. The Bulldogs are journeying to Mobile, Alabama, just like we did yet last year, except this year it's the inaugural Gulf Coast Classic. Lots of people are excited about this around the state, coach. They're even trying to turn this into another Magic City Classic. We've got to go down early. Yeah, I kind of figured that's probably what they was trying to do. You know, since we had so much success or having so much success with the Magic City Classic, they get another game down there and see if they can't turn it into another uh, Magic City Classic. But uh, uh, it's our home game. Uh, we don't mind traveling. Um, it's a conference opener against a very good football team. Coach Odom does a great job with his guys. They're always prepared. They're always in the right spot. They're good in all three phases of the game, special teams, offense, and defense. Uh, so it's going to be a great challenge. We look forward to the challenge going down, starting off our conference season, and getting off to a good start. This is why you were brought to the Hill, Coach, because of your championship experience. What do you have to do in your first conference game to get off to a good start? We've got to take care of the football always. Offensively, we've got to take care of the football. We've got to be more consistent. Uh, I think we're running the ball uh, pretty well, and, and, and Akil is spreading the ball around. We've got to continue to do that. But if we take care of the ball on offense, don't get them short fields, don't give them no momentum, uh, we'll be fine there. Defense, we just got to... Uh, uh, get lined up, assignment and uh, alignment, and uh, then we just got to tackle a little bit better, you know, in space, one-on-one, -on -one, which we didn't do well this week, uh, but we've done well in the past. So we got to get back to tackling well in space against those guys. And then special teams, we got to stay solid, which we've been all year long. I don't see no reason why we shouldn't be able to stay solid in the special teams. And if we can do that, we're going to have a great chance to win a football game. Your coaching staff is pretty intense right now, Coach. Is there any room to go to the top with your enthusiasm? I don't think so. You know, game day is game day. You know, no matter if we're playing Southern or Cincinnati or Miles, you know, it's going to be the same. You know, we're out there to win our next football game and uh, coach as hard as we can for, for three hours and uh, get the best out of our players. This is your second of four road trips, Coach. You're going to get used to being on the road. What does that say about your football operations? Uh, it's It's – part of the game you know you, you got home games you got away games you have to get prepared you got to uh, do your work during the week uh, Tuesday Wednesday Thursday uh, start getting your rest on Thursday as if it was a home game or away game you know uh, traveling takes a little bit more out of you so you got to be uh, a little bit more prepared to to make sure you get rested up and and things of that nature uh, but at the end of the day uh, you got to stay focused will this week be like a start for you for camp Will this just start everything over again? No, no. It's uh, We don't look at the first three as preseason and then now there's regular season. Um, it's just those first three games and now we start in conference. So we, we won't change what we did too much. When the Bulldogs come out of the tunnel down at Lad People Stadium in Mobile, Alabama, you be there with them. For information about tickets, you may call 256-372-4700 or aamutix.com. That's aamu. TIX.com. That Saturday kickoff is 4 o'clock p.m. from Mobile, Alabama. We will see you again next Sunday when we hope we are talking about Coach Maynard's first victory as a Southwestern Athletic Conference head coach.